Hey crafters, are you looking for a unique card that's gonna wow your family and friends? Well, I'm Georgia with Creative Moments by G and we have a pop-up box card that is super easy to make and we wanna make it with you today. Let's head down to the crafting table and let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need for your card is to cut your base card. Now this base card is a little different than your normal A2 base card. This is cut at four and a fourth by eight, and we're gonna make some score lines. So go ahead and pull out your trimmer, and we are going to score it at one and a fourth and two and a half. Now we simply are going to fold forward and fold back. So go ahead and get your bone folder and let's reinforce those score lines. And most people score on the top, but they forget to score this bottom. So make sure that you really go in there and score this bottom. And this is how our card is going to stand. Now you're going to need to put a mat on the back so that you can write your sentiment. So let's go ahead and do that and just get that out of the way. Now we are gonna make two cards today because we want you to become familiar with how to make this card because it is so easy but yet it is so unique and everybody is gonna love it. So let's get some glue on the back and just get this back fixed. Now on the front here, we need to cut some squares. So let me tell you the measurements of the four squares that you're going to cut. You need to cut a three and three fourths square. You need a three and a fourth square. You need a two and three fourths square. And finally, a two and a fourth square. Now on each of these squares, we're gonna make some score lines to create this box effect that I told you about. So let's do our first box. And we need to score at one inch, two and a fourth, and three and a fourth. I wanna remind you that our measurements will be listed over on creativemomentsbyg.com. So you can head over there to our blog and just pick those up. Now, let's go ahead and create this box just so that you can see exactly what we're doing. Now we're going to take this and we're simply going to crease it with our bone folder, turn it to the other side, fold in, and fold in again. Now let's look at this for just a moment so that you'll understand exactly where we're gonna put the glue. We are going to put the glue on both end tabs of each square, so they're all the same way. So let's bring in our base card, and I wanna go ahead and just add a little bit more color, so let's add this mat down before we start adding our boxes. And this just really ties in the DSP that we are going to use on this card. So we have our square. Let's just flatten it just like this with the little bitty tab over to the right. Now go ahead and add some glue down this tab and down this side. Now, you're going to take this side with the little bitty tab and you're gonna fold it on the second score line, fold it under, and now we are simply adding this right to the score line of our card and just lay it flat and hold it. This is what is going to create our first box. Now, we will add our DSP later but let's just go ahead and hold this down. We wanna make sure that it gets a really good grip on it. And you fold it up. Now look at that. See how it created our first box. 
Now let's go ahead and create our second box. And we need score lines of three fourths, two, and two and three fourths. Once again, let's move our trimmer out of the way and let's fold in on our score line, turn it over, fold in the score line and fold in that little bitty score line. Now we're gonna flatten it again. We have our big tab over to the left and our small one over to the right. Let's go ahead and bring in our glue. Let's add our glue down each side. And this is so cool. You simply take the tab that is small, the second score line, fold it under, bring in your card, this one goes flat, and just line it up right in the middle. And let's just hold it so that we can make sure that it really does adhere to the card before you open it up because you don't want it to pull apart. And as I mentioned, we're gonna make a second card because the second card will go much faster. I just want you to see it twice so that you become really familiar with making this card because it is such a unique card. This pop-up card is just so pretty, this pop-up block. And now, instead of pulling it by here because you know you really need to wait for the glue to dry, we're going to simply push it. And there we have our two boxes. Now let's go ahead and make our third box. We're gonna pick up the two and three fourths inch square. We are going to put some score lines on it. Half an inch, let's create that score line. One and three fourths and two and a fourth. Go ahead and put this to the side. Now we're going to fold it forward using our bone folder to reinforce it. Turn it to the other side and fold everything in. Now remember, you always want the larger tab or you can think of it like the side that has two score lines, you always want that to your right. So let's go ahead and add our glue to the end tabs. And remember, push this one down on the second score line so that it looks just like this. We're going to line this up right in the center and fold it over. Do you see how it is creating those cascading pop-up boxes? I <laughs> love this card. And just hold it down because we really want it to stick to the base card. And then you can just push it up. Remember, you don't want to pull it. You want to wait for it to dry completely. And we know that it hasn't done that. So now we have our three boxes. And we're going to make our last box. So let's go ahead and bring in our trimmer again. And let's create our score lines. We need a fourth of an inch one and a half, and one and three fourths. Now let's reinforce that with our bone folder, turn it over, fold this one to the middle, fold this one to the middle. Let's go ahead and put our glue right on the end tab. Now we're going to fold this one over, bring in your base card, line it up in the center, and just hold it. Now we're gonna lay this flat right here and I'm going to show you the DSP that we're going to use. Let's go ahead and just Put something on that to hold it down. 
Now we have used for this pop-up box card, we use the embossing folder that's called Wintry 3D and we use these beautiful little snowflakes. We also use the sentiment from Merriest Moments and we picked up some beautiful DSP from the Bows of Holly. Look at this. And this is going to go on the top of our boxes. So let's just bring this up. Now remember, kind of push it from the side right there so that we give it time to dry. We're not putting a lot of stress on it. Now look at those boxes. How cute is that? It's going to stand up on their desk as a keepsake, but now we're simply going to start decorating it. Now we need to go ahead and run this through the embossing machine. So let's go ahead and just find exactly where we want most of the embossed area. I really like that area on the embossing. And that's a great tip. When you have small strips like this, make sure that you really place it where you get most of the design. So let me just run this through. I'm just going to open it up and look at this beautiful design. So we are going to add that right here, right on the side. So let's just grab our glue. And we are going to cut our strips. Now go ahead and cut a one inch strip of your DSP. And the first strip that we're going to cut is one and three and a half. So one strip really does it from a 12 by 12 DSP. So we're going to cut one and three and a half. So that's going to be our first box that we have. Next, we're going to cut a three inch. Then a two and a half. And finally, a two inch. Now, I cut an extra strip just in case I needed it, but I don't need it. Now, we are going to add these to our base card. Just bring in your glue. And I love these coordinating colors. I love that we picked up this garden green and added it. It's so pretty. And you can just add this right here to your box. We're going to add the next one. The next one, and then we have one more box to add the top DSP to. So just slip that right in there. And then finally, our very last little box. And now what we have done is we have created a sentiment that is square. So we cut a square that is one and seven eighths and one and seven eighths. And then we cut a coordinating color that is two and a fourth by two and a fourth. And we're simply going to add this on dimensionals. And then we're going to add it to the front of our card. Now, if you have a team of people or you work in an office, and you're looking for that secret Santa gift, this is perfect for that because it is so fast, but it is such a unique design that everybody's just going to think you spent hours and hours working on it. Make sure you stay with this because we have some additional cards to show you after we make our second card. So let's go ahead and just lay this down. And really, the size of your square depends on your sentiment. So if you are using a smaller straight line, you'll want to do a rectangle. But we're going to go ahead and set this up on dimensionals right here. And notice how you just want to use the left third of the card. So that's a very important tip. Make sure that you only have dimensionals where it's going to stick to this first area right there because you don't want it to stick to this box and close it. And look at that card. Stands up perfectly. 
a great keepsake. Love this card. Now let's move on. The next card that we make will not be Christmas, but we are going to use Perched in a Tree. We love this bird and we love the DSP that kind of goes with it. It's Rings of Love, but it is this beautiful bird right here. Now I have everything cut and ready to go. So let's put together this card. Remember, you need to go ahead and have your base card. We're gonna make a few score lines at one and a fourth. And two and a half. We are going to fold into the center of the card and reinforce it with our bone folder. And we're going to fold this top one back so that it creates almost like a Z fold, right? So we have this. Now we're going to lay down a mat for the front because we want some coordinating colors in there. Just gonna let that dry for a second. And now we're going to bring in our squares that we've created. We went ahead and we made the score lines on them. And remember, you're going to fold into the center of the card, into the center of the square. Turn it over, find your score line, fold it into the center, and the last tab, fold it into the center as well. And this actually creates your box, right? So the way we add this to our card is we lay it flat, we take our glue and we add glue on each end tab. Now, remember, keep the small tab, the one that has two score lines to your right and fold over that second score line. We're going to lay this right up against the score line on our base card and fold it over. We're gonna hold it because we want that glue to really adhere to the base card. So once you have this and it's adhered to the base card, still don't pull on this tab right here. Don't do that. Let it go and push your box, right? And that way we know that it's gonna hold in place because you do have to wait a good 30 minutes for it to really be stuck. And now we're ready to do our next square. So just move that up, fold to the middle of the square, do your other tab to the middle of the square, flip it over, find that score line, fold to the middle. And remember, you're gonna open it up and you're going to keep the small tab to the right. It has two score lines on it. Keep it to the right. And now we're going to add our glue to the end tabs. Take it in your hand and fold under that second score line so that we have it just like this. Bring in your base card, go right to the bottom of that box and fold down. And just hold it so that it really gets stuck to the base card. Now remember, don't pull from this side yet because it really hasn't dried as much as we want. Push from this side. And that way you know that your box is gonna stay down. And there we have our second box. We're taking our next square, we're folding into the middle, turn it over, find the score line, reinforce it to the middle, and the same on this one. Open it up and put glue on both end tabs. Take this one that has the smallest tab, fold it under, bring in your base card, put it right in the center and just press it down. And you can also reinforce it with your bone folder if you want. Just slip it in there and really give it a good crease. There we have it. Now we're going to fix our last pop-up box. Bring it in. Now this one has a very small 
score line on it, that's okay. Fold it right to the center. Use your bone folder. Use your bone folder. We're going to fold this over and we're just going to put it right in the center. And now we are ready to bring in our side strips. Now on this one, we're not embossing it. We're just going to lay it down because we have colored a beautiful bird. Let's bring in our strips that we've already cut. Now if you have directional paper, be mindful of how you put this on your card because you want to make sure it goes exactly right. I wouldn't want to put my birds upside down. Bring in the next DSP. Okay, it's going to stand up perfectly and look at that beautiful design. Now what we have done is we simply took that stamp set perched in a tree, we used our blends and we colored this beautiful bird to match the birds on the DSP. We punched out a two and a half inch circle. We're simply going to add this to the dimensionals. We're going to add this to the front of our card, just like this, making sure that you don't go over because you can't go over, it won't fit in the envelope, I and mean, his little tail needs to be right there. So you only want to put dimensionals on the third of, back third of this circle. And now we're adding our sentiment. We cut out, love you, miss you, we're just going to put it right here over him and we're simply going to glue it down. And there we have our card. Now, you have plenty of space to write on the back. Love this Christmas card and remember I told you we have some additional cards to show you. We used our base card and we didn't add a mat here. We just added our strips. We did emboss the front. Then we had to do one with flowers, right? We added a few gems right here on the front. We didn't add a mat on this one either, but we wanted to step it up today and show you that you could add a mat very easily. And finally, we brought in our black and white stripes with our red. Wow, look at that card. Doesn't that look like an optical illusion? It does to me. This is a beautiful pop-up box card that you can make. Now, you can use any kind of label here that you want, but just love these cards. They are so unique. Well, we hope you enjoyed these cards and you were inspired. Take a moment, please. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share with your friends. Help us grow our channel. We want you to go out and have a fantastic day. Remember, all the supplies and materials are listed below the video, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.